In Albuquerque, New Mexico, the National Congress of American Indians has been meeting to press for the Indians' rights as citizens. It's the largest meeting the organization has held, and its mood is angry. Many Indians fear the government still won't let them run their own affairs. I know that this is probably going to anger a few of you Uncle Tomahawks, or you sellouts, or you hang around the forts as they used to be called in the old days. And I really don't give a damn, because I came down here to cause a little disturbance. The crazy horse and Geronimo, and a few of these other great leaders we had, could see the pathetic conditions we're living under today. I'm sure they would turn over in their grave. American Indians are becoming militant, demanding the government take action to help solve their problems of poverty and discrimination. 1,500 Indians are in Albuquerque, parading and making their demands known to the National Congress of American Indians. The administration is aware of this new militancy. Secretary of the Interior, Walter Hickel, who is in charge of Indian Affairs, was sent out along with Vice President Agnew to reassure the Indians that the Great White Father will provide for them. Senator Edward Kennedy also appeared, pledging to support Indian causes just as his brother Robert had done. The federal government's Indian policies have been continuing national failure of major proportions. These policies have swung between harsh policies of starving the Indians into submission or a kind of policies of helping them become non-Indian. Now, I would have to agree that these policies have been less than effective. However, I must remind you that Senator Kennedy's party presided over those failures for the past eight years. Eight years of Democratic control of the White House with a Democrat-controlled Congress. To some Indians, it looked like partisan bickering over their problems. They didn't like it and took out their wrath on Hickel. There will be no plan concerning Indians without having Indians in the planning. There will be no programs for Indians without Indians running the program. The, the, uh, we have... Most of the Indians did not join in disrupting Hickel, but even the moderates agreed they're tired of the white man's promises and they want action on their problems. Don Oliver, NBC News. American Indians are using a well-known national landmark to carry their land claim protest to new heights. Ike Pappas reports from the Black Hills of South Dakota. Another dawn rises over Mount Rushmore, over Washington and Roosevelt, Jefferson and Lincoln. But it also rises these days over a small band of American Indians who cling not only to the craggy edges of the mountain, but to the hope that someday this land will be theirs again. Three times each day, teams of young men and women make the 3,000-foot climb to the Indian camp to bring supplies to support their protest. These Indians have renamed Mount Rushmore. It is now called Crazy Horse Mountain. The Indians, about 30 of them, have been here since last weekend when, against federal regulations, they set up a camp on the mountainside close to the memorial. They claim these Black Hills of South Dakota are legally theirs by treaty, and they have come to take them back. Oh, Indian <laughs> to dramatize their protest, the Indians perch on a ledge overlooking the main pavilions and shout slogans to the tourists below. One of their leaders is Lehman Brightman, president of United Native Americans, an Indian protest group. Well, first I should say the federal government said this land would belong to us as long as the grass grows and the water flows and the sun shines. Then six years later they sent uh, General Custer into this area on an expedition and they discovered gold here in the Black Hills. 
Then they turned around and took this land from us. We're sick and tired of sitting back and uh, turning the other cheek and then bend over and get those other two kicked. You're going to see some wide awake, educated Indians. We've got some new Indians coming up, new warriors. And we're, this is a breeding ground right here. You're going to see a lot of spark. The National Park Service at first offered some small resistance to the camping Indians, but now it is the intention of the rangers to cooperate with the protesters until someone in Washington figures out what to do with them. Wallace McCaw, president of the National Memorial. They say they have a right to the land. Yes, uh, and it's uh, never been finally determined uh, in the courts or by... Uh, the means that are open as to just who does own the land. It's still in litigation. Do you think maybe that's why you're letting them stay there? Uh, you know, there's a 50% chance they're right, that it is theirs. Mm. That does give them possibly uh, a little bit more of a right than you and I might have. The Indians say they will stay until they get what they want, and what they want is to meet with Interior Secretary Walter Hickel to demand that the Black Hills be given back to them. But Hickel is out of the country and will not be back for at least five days. So it appears as if Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln will have to share their mountain with the Indians, at least until then. It appears as if the Indians, in their latest battle with the federal government, have won at least the first few rounds. Ike Pappas, CBS News, at Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. Vince Lombardi, the famed football 